He's retired now. A lot of his Tulsa, Oklahoma police department buddies and state police buddies would laugh at him deer hunting 10 years ago about the New World Order. They're not laughing now. They're calling him up, wanting to understand what's happening. So without further ado, Colonel Craig Roberts for the balance of the radio transmission. Craig, it's great to have you with us. Hi, Alex. Good to be back. Uh, where to start? I mean, you know, we've gone from being called kooks and conspiracy theorists because we know how to read Club of Rome, UN documents, textbooks written by the White House science czar, like eco science, because nobody would look at this stuff. To now, it's finally being announced. I mean, where do we start? Well, you know, it's it's really hard because it all depends on what tentacle of the octopus you want to grab. Uh, you know, there's there's so many organizations involved that interlink on this deal because it, it's uh, the the globalist uh, organization that's trying to bring in this new world order of theirs has been around for you know over 200 years. But what they finally have done is they is they finally created enough different organizations interlinked to handle their logistical and their political. Uh, problems that they had in the past. Before, you know, you had separate nations. Uh, you had borders. You had everybody taking care of themselves. But they've taken all that away. They've gotten rid of the borders. Uh, they're combining the monetary institutions. Uh, they're doing everything they can to destroy the first world and take and redistribute the wealth to the third world. So they lower us down to second world status and bring the third world up to second world status. And then they've, they've succeeded with their new world order. Uh, the only, uh, I mean, almost all the dominoes have fallen over on this deal. Uh, except us, and we're next. And they're doing a pretty good job with it right now. They're going a lot faster than I ever thought they would. I figured it would be another few years before they would get as far as they did in this year alone. So we're seeing more things happen with this bunch in Washington we've got right now that is totally uh, uh, trying to destroy this country with very few people uh, able to, to, to slow them down or stop them. It's just incredible. We, I mean, it's almost like we just have to sit in the grandstands and watch it happen, Alex. And, and, you know, we talked about this years ago, you and I did, and we, we tried getting on the radio and telling people about it. And like you said, there's people that would call in and say, no, this could never happen here. And, you know, I had people uh, in our own special operations or special investigations division of the police department that were watching me uh, because they're, they're saying, this, this Roberts guy, he's nuts. He's talking about all this weird stuff. You know, he's talking about this new world order. He's talking about, you know, these, uh, you know, the Rothschild plan and, and, you know, all the rest of it. You know, we got to watch this guy. He's, he's, he's off the range here. And now, uh, about, you know, about uh, oh, I don't know, six or eight months ago, one of those guys came to me. He's retired now. And he says, you know, he says, they all thought you were nuts back then. And now they think, you're, you know, you're way ahead of your time. You're an actual prophet. And I said, all they had to do was do their homework. All they had to do was read the material that was available out there. And I would have given them some of it. I, I'd open my files to them. But uh, now they're, they're saying, okay, what do we do now? You know, how do we deal with this? Uh, what, what do we do? And I, said, <laughs> and I said, well, for a lot of you guys, it's just a little bit too late to start worrying about how to deal with it. Uh, you've got to uh, start preparing. And what are you going to do to protect your family? What are you going to do to protect your neighbors? What are you going to do to protect your community? Because that's what it's going to boil down to. It's going to have to be a grassroots effort from the bottom up to where this entire country uh, has a, a culture that, that comes up from the bottom up, educates our kids, educates our friends and neighbors, and then is able to, to stand up and resist all this globalist activity that's going on. We're going to have to do something about securing the borders. You're down there close to the Mexican border. Uh, you know, you're, Texas, you know, I, I'm sitting here in Oklahoma, and we look at Texas as a buffer zone right now. You know, we passed a law that if you hired an illegal immigrant, you would go to jail. Uh, and so most of the, the illegals left Oklahoma, but they went to Texas, they went to Arkansas, they went to Kansas. Um, but as long as we've got open borders and we're not doing anything about it, and our own government is discouraging doing anything about it and actually prosecuting border agents if they do anything about it, uh, we're going to have, we're going to have a problem because it's an, it's an, it's an illegal immigrant invasion. It's not, it's not guys coming over here to pick fruit like it was 30 years ago. It's people coming over here with MS-13. They're coming over with drugs. They're coming over with weapons. And they're smuggling in Islamic terrorists. Uh, it's just wide open. And so what, what do we do about that? I don't know. We, if, you know, if we're not willing to get the military involved in securing our own borders, then what are we doing with the military? You know, we've got over, right now, we've, on active duty, we've got 1,445,000 thousand uh, troops of all services. Now, out of that, you've got 1,083,000 stationed inside the United States. Uh, what are they doing? You know, we, we need to have our borders protected, and we're not doing it. And I've had people tell me, well, you can't use the military to protect the borders. I'm going, where did you get that? 
That's one, That's the primary function of the military in this country, is to protect the borders of this country. That's the primary mission, defense of the nation. And it starts at the border. You know, it doesn't start in Afghanistan. It doesn't start in South Korea. It starts here. If we have to go someplace else to protect ourselves by taking out enemy elements or the ability to fight or create terrorism, that's fine. But but our main operation for the military is to protect this nation. And we're not doing it. We're not using those guys. We've got governors in border states saying, well, I can use the National Guard to do that. And they're told, no, you can't. That's that's uh, U.S. equipment. That is not state equipment they've got. And you're not going to use U.S. equipment owned by the Army or the Navy or the Marines to go to the border and do this. Well, let me stop you right there and go back to something you said three minutes ago. You said we've got to take over the grassroots because they've taken over the high ground. They've taken over the federal and, 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 and many of the state governments. But there is a revolt by the states redeclaring their Ninth and Tenth Amendment, not for secession, but to declare states' rights. And that's why we now have this internal U.N. document, not just Climate Gate, but this new internal U.N. document, two of them, where they admit they've taken over all the universities. They admit, in their own words, it's a communist system. They admit in here uh, that that they've got to be deceptive, uh, just like the SPP documents from two years ago said they had to do North American integration by stealth. They say in here, we've got the youth, and, and the UN has programs that are teaching the kids to sing global warming songs. I have mainstream links to the New York Times where seventh graders come home and write mock tickets to their parents about taking a hot bath or shower, saying it's too big a carbon footprint. Al Gore's caught on video and audio teaching school kids to tell your parents what to do. Kathleen Sabellis has, has been caught doing it on, on C-SPAN. I mean, they admit they have now, we have a former special forces colonel assigned to black ops in Austin. This was in the Statesman, the paper, saying, oh, I now run the new environmental carbon tax. So we have the cities through the U.N. control with the military. We have NORTHCOM uh, not just not defending our borders, but saying our real mission is dealing with libertarians and conservatives and veterans and gun owners because they're not going to go along with the new world order. I mean, uh, so it's not just that the military isn't allowed to do their job. You've read the articles about Brigade Homeland and... Uh, tell that story about Wesley Clark, uh, or was it? Uh, it was or, or, McCaffrey. Yeah, General McCaffrey. That's right. Uh, I'd read a separate article with Wesley Clark saying foreign troops may be needed. I mean, this is really happening. We, uh, here's the point I'm making. We've been right this far about what was going to happen. Get into the foreign troops. Get into how they're planning to lock things down, stage terror attacks, blame it on patriots. I mean, we know the next big attacks aren't going to be blamed on Muslims. It's going to be blamed on people like Craig Roberts and Alex Jones. Well, you know, they've got to, they've got to have some kind of a patsy. They've got to have some type of escape, scapegoat for everything they do. It's the old Reichstag fire deal. It's the Oklahoma City McVeigh did it deal. It's the Kennedy assassination. Oswald did it by himself deal. Uh, you know, backed by the Cubans so we can invade Cuba. I mean, what they do is they set an objective and then they figure out how can they get the American couch potato off the couch to support us in doing this. Uh, because Americans are, are the worst ones in the world about sitting around and doing nothing until we get punched in the nose. It took Pearl Harbor to get us into World War II. It took the Lusitania to get us into World War I. Uh, so, you know, how, how do we wake up the American people and get them on our side to go do whatever it is we want to do? And so what they do is they come up with, with some type of a, of, of a uh, uh, situation, a uh, terrorist event, whatever, and it could be anything. I mean, we could see something in the near future. Very, uh, you know, we, we're, we're being prepped right now with all of these different reports leaking out of Islamic terrorist types coming across the border. And I've been in contact with one of the border sheriffs down there, uh, by the way, who they found Muslim prayer rugs, and they found backpacks, and they found Korans, and they found um, uh, military patches from a commando unit in Syria inside an abandoned ranch house down there near the border where the people just gave up and left. And these people were coming across and staying there at nighttime. And uh, the deputies drove up in this house, and they just ran off into the desert. And they didn't catch him. It was at night. But uh, he, he, you know, he put this out. He put it on the internet. He showed pictures of this patch, and I had uh, uh, someone I know who, who speaks Arabic and all of that, who's from that region, he identified the patch. He said these are Syrian commandos that are coming over here, and they could be Hezbollah too, because they, you know, they work out of Syria and Lebanon, and so they're here. Okay, we're being prepped mentally 
to expect some type of, an, of a jihadist attack here in this country. And let me stop you again and then continue along that line. We're now seeing CNN, Fox, BBC saying the militias, and, and they're having imams that we know are CIA fronts say, we are the Muslim extremists. We're going to release 100 pounds of anthrax. We work with your militias, which is completely made up. So now they're trying to nexus and tie in the fake McVeigh types with the Muslims. Yeah, I mean, they're going to, you know, there's how many of them out there have some dupe uh, who, who's working for uh, this whatever shadow organization that's behind this whole deal that is ready to be used as a throwdown to place the blame on militias, right wingist uh, Christians, uh, you know, whoever they fear. And they fear us. They fear Christians. They fear conservatives. They fear uh, patriotic Americans. And that's what the MIAC report states. I mean, did you get angry when you read the Homeland Security report saying Ron Paul stickers mean you're a terrorist? 